Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I am Dr. Daud, and the topic of our today's lecture is cervical lymphadenopathy. You can see in this picture that neck can be broadly divided into two triangles. One is anterior triangle, and the other is posterior triangle. What is this muscle? This is sternocleidomastoid. So anterior triangle is from the midline up to the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. and the posterior triangle is from the posterior border of, of sternocleidomastoid up to the trapezius muscle and the inferior boundary of the posterior triangle is formed by clavicle so there are different various group of lymph nodes which are present in our neck so we will discuss today the anatomy the physiology and the different classification system by which we classify these lymph nodes First of all an assignment question for you classify cervical lymph nodes according to various levels and what are the boundaries of level 2 level 3 and 4 cervical lymph nodes and enumerate their drainage areas in head and neck so what is a lymph node it is collection of lymphoid cell attached to both vascular and lymphatic systems and there are over 600 lymph nodes in our body it is actually a bean shaped organ and each node has fibrous capsule and as a hilum at one side it receives many afferent vessels and gives efferent vessels from its hilum histopathologically the lymph node is divided into outer cortex and inner medulla fibrous trabeculae extend from the deep surface of the capsule into the cortex to divide it into various compartments fibrous trabeculae in the medulla are irregular and called medullary cords always remember that lymphoid follicles form continuous row in the cortex and they are absent in medulla then what is lymph it is a fluid in composition similar in composition to blood plasma and it is derived from the blood plasma by filtration through the capillary walls at the arterial end As soon as the interstitial fluid enters the lymph capillaries it is called lymph and its main function is to maintain normal blood volume and pressure and what is the function of what are the different functions of lymphatic system first is to provide optimal sites for the concentration of free or cell associated antigens and recirculating lymphocytes or you can say sensitization of immune response then to collect to allow contact between b cells t cells and macrophages lymph nodes and other lymphatic organs filter the lymph to remove and destroy microorganisms and other foreign body particles it returns excess interstitial fluid to the blood to maintain blood volume and blood pressure and another function is to absorb fat and the fat soluble vitamins from the digestive system by special lymph capillaries called lacteal the lymph in the lacteals has a milky appearance due to its high fat content and is called chyle then how can we classify the lymph nodes of head and neck there are various classification system the first is to classify into upper horizontal chain the lateral cervical chain and the anterior cervical chain The upper horizontal chain of nodes includes some mental nodes, some mandibular nodes, parotid, postauricular, occipital, and facial nodes. The lateral cervical nodes include superficial external jugular group and the deep group. The deep group can be further divided into the groups of nodes which are present along the internal jugular chain, then the spinal accessory chain, and then the transverse cervical chain. Then the anterior cervical nodes. they are further divided into anterior jugular chain which is present along the anterior jugular vein and the juxta visceral chain in which a uh, group of lymph nodes include the pre laryngeal the pre tracheal and the para tracheal nodes here you can see in this picture that there are anterior cervical nodes these are the lower jugular nodes these are the mid jugular nodes and these are the upper jugular nodes 
then the nodes which are present in the posterior triangle spinal accessory chain and the transverse cervical chain and the nodes which are present in the anterior triangle and then the submental nodes and submandibular nodes there is another classification system which is surgically more significant and more widely worldwide accepted this is american joint committee on cancer classification in this classification system we divide the cervical lymph nodes into various levels there are seven levels of cervical lymph nodes the level 1 include the mental and submandibular lymph nodes level 2 include upper deep cervical lymph nodes level 3 include the middle deep cervical lymph nodes level 4 include lower deep cervical lymph nodes level 5 include the spinal accessory and the transverse cervical lymph nodes level 6 include the pretracheal the prelaryngeal and the paratracheal lymph nodes and level 7 include the upper mediastinal nodes here in this picture you can see this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle this is level 1 and level 1a and level 1b level 1a include some mental lymph nodes level 1b include some mandibular lymph nodes and then level 2 3 and 4 always remember that level 2 3 and 4 they are present along the internal jugular chain so that's why they are called upper jugular lymph nodes which is present extend from the lower border of the mandible up to the higher bone then the level 3 which extend from higher bone up to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage level 3 is called mid jugular lymph node then the lower jugular lymph node also called the level 4 lymph nodes it extend from the lower border of the cricoid cartilage up to the suprasternal notch then level 5 lymph nodes they are present in the posterior triangle they are further divided into 5a and 5b by spinal accessory nerve the nodes which are present above the spinal accessory nerve are 5a and nodes which are present below the spinal accessory nerve they are 5b then level 6 it is anterior cervical lymph nodes they include the lymph nodes which are present behind the larynx called prelaryngeal lymph nodes the lymph nodes which are present behind the trachea called pretracheal lymph nodes and lymph nodes which are present along the trachea they are called paratracheal lymph nodes then level 7 level 7 these include the upper mediastinal lymph nodes So these are the different levels of cervical lymph nodes in which we classify. And why we divide the cervical lymph nodes into various levels? This division is very important. Why? Because different group of lymph nodes they drain certain different areas of head and neck. For example, if there is a lesion on the tongue, the drainage lymph nodes will be one A, one B, two and three. so if there is a lesion on the tongue and it turns out to be to be a carcinoma so apart from removing that lesion we will also we will also have to remove level 1 2 and 3 lymph nodes in the neck and we call it neck dissection so these group of lymph nodes are very important because we come to know that the different areas of the head and neck they drain in different group of lymph nodes now we will discuss all these lymph nodes one by one first is submental lymph nodes they lie on the mylohyoid muscle in the submental triangle their afferents come from the chin middle part of the lower lip anterior gums anterior floor of mouth and tip of tongue and their efferents go to submandibular nodes and the internal jugular chain then submandibular nodes they lie in submandibular triangle in relation to submandibular gland and facial artery the afferents come from the lateral part of the lower lip the upper lip the cheek nasal vestibule anterior part of nasal cavity gums teeth medial canthus soft palate anterior pillar anterior part of tongue submandibular and sublingual salivary glands and also the floor of mouth their efferents go to internal jugular chain then the parotid nodes they lie in relation to the parotid salivary glands and are extraglandular and intraglandular preauricular and infraauricular nodes are part of extraglandular group 
and the offerings come from the scalp pinna external auditory canal face buccal mucosa and the efferents go to internal jugular or the external jugular chain then the post auricular nodes also called the mastoid nodes they lie behind the pinna over the mastoid and the offerings come from the scalp posterior surface of pinna and skin of mastoid and their efferents drain into infra auricular nodes and into the internal jugular chain then the occipital nodes they lie both superficial and deep the saphenous capitus at the apex of posterior triangle and their offerings come from scalp skin of upper neck and their efferents drain into upper accessory chain of nodes then the facial nodes they lie along the facial vessels and are grouped according to their location they are mid mandibular vaccinator infra orbital and malar nodes their offerings come from the upper and the lower lids nose lips and cheek and their efferents drain into sub mandibular nodes then the lateral cervical nodes they include superficial group it lie along the external jugular vein and drain into the internal jugular and transfer cervical nodes then the deep group it consists of three chains internal jugular chain spinal accessory chain and transfer cervical chain internal jugular chain the lymph nodes of internal jugular chain lie anterior lateral and posterior to the internal jugular vein and they are grouped i already told you they are grouped into upper middle and lower group the upper group drains the oral cavity oropharynx nasopharynx hypopharynx larynx and parotid upper group is also called level 2 cervical lymph node the middle group drains the hypopharynx larynx thyroid oral cavity and oropharynx middle group is also called level 3 cervical lymph node the lower jugular group drains larynx thyroid and cervical esophagus it is also called level 4 cervical lymph nodes so here is a picture you can see the different group of lymph nodes they are grouped together at different levels then the spinal accessory chain it lies along the spinal accessory nerve spinal accessory chain drains the scalp skin of neck the nasopharynx occipital and the post auricular nodes and they efferent from this chain drain into transverse cervical chain then the transverse cervical chain also called the supraclavicular nodes it lies horizontally along the transverse cervical vessels in the lower part of posterior triangle the medial nodes of the group called scalene nodes offerent to those nodes come from the accessory chain and also the infraclavicular structure for example breast lung stomach colon ovaries and testes then the anterior cervical nodes they lie between the two carotids and below the level of the hyoid bone they consist of anterior jugular chain it lies along the anterior jugular vein and drains the skin of anterior neck and the juxta visceral chain which consists of prelaryngeal pretracheal and the paratracheal nodes the prelaryngeal nodes are also called delphian nodes it lies on the cricothyroid membrane and drains the subglottic region of the larynx and piriform sinuses then the pretracheal node it lie in front of the trachea and drain the thyroid gland and the trachea they refrain from these nodes go to the paratracheal lower internal jugular and the anterior mediastinal nodes and the paratracheal nodes drain the thyroid lobe subglottic part of the larynx trachea and the cervical esophagus this is the lymphatics of the tongue you can see that the tip of tongue drain into the submental nodes and the submandibular nodes the most posterior part of tongue drain into the superior deep cervical nodes and the middle part of the tongue it drain into the inferior deep cervical lymph nodes this is just a repetition you can see the lab different levels of the cervical lymph node and you can easily see that the level 2 extend from the lower border of the men of the mandible up to the hyoid bone level 3 cervical lymph node extend from the hyoid bone up to the cricoid cartilage and level 4 extend from the cricoid cartilage up to the suprasternal notch in our next lecture we will discuss what are the different causes of cervical lymphadenopathy and what is the treatment and how you will manage such cases thank you